Hi there, welcome. It's Lucy from Inclusive Change at Work Community Interest Company. Based down here in the southwest of England in Bristol, I'm talking about the Castle Conference, which is all about digital well-being for young people. A conference that we are hosting in partnership with Digital Safety Community Interest Company. It's going to be at Lee Court on the 25th of April 2024. Cannot wait to um, see people there and, and meet everyone there. And one of the people that I'm talking to today is Favel Gill, who is from the Young Gamers and Gamblers Education Trust. Hi there, Favel. Hi, Lucy. Thanks so much for having me and talking to me today. You are very, very welcome. So we're going to be we're going to be meeting at the conference. You're going to be exhibiting it at our conference. Yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait. Only a couple of weeks to go. Yes. Uh, it, part of me thinks, yes, I can't wait. Then part of me is in mild panic because it is only a couple of weeks to go. <laughs> yeah, luckily, I'm, I'm just just excited. Just excited. Yeah. I don't have quite as much work as you have to do. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a fair bit behind the scenes anyway. We're going to delve into some questions. So I've got some kind of questions that I ask everyone and, and let's see where we go with them because it'd be great to find out a little bit more about your organisation, a little bit more about why you want to exhibit and we'll we'll take it further from there. So just to start off, can you tell us a bit about you and your organisation? Yeah, well, like you said, I'm, my name's Fable and I work for the charity Wiger. I'm the training and engagement manager for the South West. And the charity that I work for, YGAM, has the mission to prevent children and young people from experiencing gaming and gambling harms. So we do this through awareness raising, education and research. And we develop and deliver training and resources for a range of groups who support children and young people. The charity itself was established in 2014 as a result of lived experience of our founders and today our resources are used in hundreds of schools, colleges and educational settings in every region of England, Wales and Northern Ireland. And wow. our free training gives thousands of teachers, youth workers and professionals the knowledge and skills to deliver safeguarding sessions to millions of children and people every year. You had me at free training sessions. <laughs> It's the key thing. A lot of people don't realise that. But yeah, we're fully funded. So absolutely no cost to anyone. That's incredible. And, and been going for 10 years. Yeah, in fact, we're celebrating our 10 year anniversary this year. We're doing lots of fundraising fun activities to celebrate and mark this monumentous occasion. Fantastic. Now, just a bit back and I'll wind back to the conference now. OK, so you're going to be exhibiting at the Castle Conference in, in April at Lee Court. Why is this so important? Collaboration is at the centre of YGAM's success. So working with organisations that share our passion for education and safeguarding has hugely enhanced our ability to increase our impact. Digital wellbeing is a hugely relevant issue in our field, and it's vital that we work together to ensure the best outcomes for our young people. And this event presents such an exciting opportunity to raise awareness about the crucial work we do, exchange best practices, utilize networking opportunities and most importantly continue to learn together i think i think that's fantastic and i think what's going to be incredible is is meeting some of the other exhibitors some of the delegates who may not know that ygamp is is here in the west country and and doing the great work that you you've already just talked about plus also developing those networks developing the the contacts that you have down here yeah i think that's so important because Word of mouth is such a big part of how we spread what we do. So it'll be so good to meet up with all those other organisations and charities that do the same work as, as us and, and want to promote each other and help promote each other. That's fantastic. So I've got a bit of a deeper question now. What exactly is it then that, that YGAM do to support those adults and professionals around young people? So we provide free training and it's a city and guilds assured training and what that training does is help those professionals to understand trends amongst young people when it comes to gaming and gambling and what influences them to to choose to game and gamble but also how to spot the signs of potential and it's it just means that all of the the professionals the adults working with young people can then identify 
when a young person may be struggling and be able to spot the signs and be able to signpost where they can go for support. That sounds incredible. That's really, really helpful. And I'm hoping through the Castle Conference and through through engagement, we'll be able to get that message out to a lot more people. So next question from me. What are you hearing from parents, from young people or schools and other partners that you work with? What are you hearing about this topic? And is it really all that bad? So gaming and gambling are two different activities, but there are increasingly blurred lines between them. You'd struggle to find a child in the UK in 2024 who doesn't play video games. So 89% of children aged 2 to 17 have played video games in the last year. 77% of 7 to 18 year olds have access to a games console. And with children spending so much time playing video games, parents are recognising the need to stay informed and understand the content that their children are engaging with. One concern that's increasingly raised by parents and teachers is the money that their children can spend while playing some games. So over a third of young people aged 11 to 17 have paid for in-game items in video games with their own money or virtual currency in the last 12 months. One in five aged 11, 17 have spent money or virtual currency to unlock loot boxes or packs or chests, so to acquire in-game items. And there's a lot of growing concern that some of the in-game microtransactions, such as loot boxes, contain gambling-like features. And by allowing under-18s to access them, it's conditioning them to gambling behaviour when they're not of an appropriate age. So, Sorry, carry on. The latest research from the Gambling Commission revealed that over one in four 11 to 17-year-olds had spent their own money on gambling in the last 12 months. So over half of young people have seen or heard gambling advertising via online or offline platforms. And actually, in fact, 1% of children aged 11 to 13 were classified as problem gamblers. So both... That age range again? 11 to 13. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And both gaming and gambling are hugely topical safeguarding issues as the younger generation now grows up entwined in the digital world. So we're seeing an increased demand for our resources from parents, teachers, and anyone else working with or caring for children and young people. That's incredible. And those those statistics are really rather sobering, I'm going to say. I'm actually listening and trying to process because it sounds like the whole aspect of gambling is becoming quite normalised within within the gaming community and within being online for young people that word normalized is something that's just come coming into my head and 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 what i'm hearing yeah it's a word we use a lot because that that's what we talk about when we when we're doing our training we talk a lot about things like the national lottery we talk things about you know horse racing and other activities that are part of our society so yeah therefore maybe the risks aren't so obvious because it is normalized oh wow and also if i think about horse racing or or betting on on horse racing or the national lottery there are restrictions in place in that we have to we generally will have to go to a place and and it's age restricted etc etc but those loot boxes that you're talking about they're maybe not quite so age restricted I think as well it's the increase of young people having access to smartphones because actually all of those things you just mentioned have the ability to bet online and and do it online and So, yeah, there's there's complications there. Wow. Are you able to explain to me a loot box just in case, you know, just in case I didn't know what you were talking about? Yeah. So a loot box is a virtual in-game item. So it's something you can buy within a game, either with money that you've earned by playing. So virtual currency, you've you've earned points or you can actually use real money. And within that box, you're getting things that might improve your gaming experience. So you might get a new weapon, you might get a new skin, you might get a new character. So there there are various different types with different ways of purchasing purchasing them and opening them. But most games have the ability to to buy these loot boxes of some variety to try and enhance their game. Okay, thank you. That was was really helpful to understand some of that terminology sometimes and, and some of the things that our kids will probably know, but as 
adults and grown-ups sometimes it kind of passes us by we go yeah yeah whatever and and it's just helpful to know that terminology and I think that's another huge part of our training because we don't just offer it for professionals. We have training for, for awareness sessions for parents as well, where we talk about you know gaming jargon and, and vocabulary and how games work. So I think that's another really important part to raise. Really incredibly helpful. OK, I've got another question for you. OK, so we've talked about what you're hearing, whether it's it's you know, whether it is all that bad. It sounds like in terms of those statistics pretty sobering, pretty, pretty hard hearing to, to hear, you know, 11 to 13 year olds in, in that area of problem, problem gangling. But what do you think we can do to make a change and support young people in a digital world? So education is essential. The digital world presents many opportunities, but it also harbors emerging risks that we have a responsibility to educate young people about. It's so important to equip them with the knowledge and understanding to reduce their vulnerability as they explore the digital world. We mm. need to integrate age appropriate information and social resistance skills into education. So by raising awareness and enhancing understanding of gaming and gambling harms, we can eliminate stigma and create a safer online environment for future generations. That's incredible. I've never heard the phrase social resistance before. What does what does that mean? So that means the ability for young people to know when to say no to things like drugs, alcohol, and be able to resist things that might be happening, for maybe in peer pressure or things they're seeing around them. That's really helpful. I'm, I'm learning. I've learned something new today. I'm really, really chuffed with that. Okay. Right. How can people get in touch with YGAM if they, they want to find out more about your training and, and talk to you? So there's a number of ways. So the website, on the website, there are booking forms to our online training courses. Um, Is there a contact, a contact form? form. That's yes. the word, a contact form. Or you can directly email myself, fablegill at ygam.org. Yeah, there's, there's many ways Brilliant. to do the website. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just going to check that website as well, because if you're listening to this rather than watching, if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see that we put our websites on our on our names. But if you're listening, that website is Y G A M for mother. All right. So Y G A M dot org. OK, so Y Gam dot org is the is the website we're talking about. Young gamers. And oh, I'm just going to say that again. Young Gamers and Gamblers Education Trust. You can find them at ygam.org. And Favel, thank you so much for coming to have a chat. Thank uh, you. Be, you're very, very welcome. We're going to be seeing you at the conference. Just to remind everybody, that conference is on the 25th of April, 2024, at Lee Court in Bristol. It's um, an all-day conference. We have got speakers from Cambridge University, Loughborough University. I'm giving a, a talk around neurodiversity and digital safeguarding. We also have suicide prevention and um, intervention charity, If You Care, share with us too. We have a range of exhibitors, which if I said them all now, I'd probably forget somebody. So I'm not going to. But we have a whole range of exhibitors of which Young Gamers and Gamblers Education Trust are going to be one of them. If you'd like more information about the conference, how to get uh, tickets, please contact icaw-cic.com. If anybody's ever wondered, ICAW stands for Inclusive Change at Work. So icaw-cic.com for more information. You can also check out Digital Safety, who are our partners in delivery for this. Digital Safety is to be found at ds-cic.com online. For now, thank you, Favor. Thanks very much, Lucy. And we'll see you all at the conference. Can't wait. Yes, very much looking forward to it. Other than that, speak to you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.